This is Twit. Oro 3D, what it is, how does it work? Uh, give us the the, the uh, bird's eye view, the big picture, if you will. By the big picture, I think we should start a little bit, uh, let's say, looking to the history. It is about 150 years ago that human beings were able to put a voice into a cable. Telephone was invented in 1861. Yeah? It took about 15 years to record and reproduce a monochannel. Edison was there with it. Yeah, And then it, then it took about 60 years yeah, to add just one channel to come to stereo. And stereo is, in mm. fact, in one-dimensional reproduction format. The speakers are just in the line in front of us. Yeah, We yeah. thought it was already 3D, but in fact, that was not true. Then they thought, okay, surround sound yeah, adds depth in sound. Also, this is the 3D sound format now. So, But in fact, surround sound is just an, an horizontal, two-dimensional plane around the audience. Yeah, So what we mm. were missing was height. And in fact, what we're missing is height around the audience. That's in fact a fully third dimension, yeah? So um, I came with the format already in 2006 to the market, yeah? Uh, without the technology, it was about the concept of the speaker layout because it was always one of my, let's say, goals. How can we create the most immersive sound? How can we come as close as possible to the quality of natural sound? That was always the goal, yeah? And at the same time, trying to have a compatible format between all markets yeah, and easy to integrate in the formats as well, just technically as well. This were, let's say, my main goals. Yeah, And mm -hmm. there were a lot of things new to me. And as an experienced producer and engineer and in, in film and music, yeah, uh, I found out so many new things that I didn't, I couldn't explain that I didn't know what was coming from. So the moment when I when I added height all around, yeah, and I mean that in front, and especially as well in the back, yeah, so there was so much more natural colors, so much more depth in, let's say, in the front, analyzing the sound field was so much easier. It was so much more relaxing as well to listen to complex soundscapes, and it was really, I never had that immersive experience. That's the reason why I called the, the format when I launched it in with all the technology. I launched the Auro 11.1 cinematic format in 2010, and I called it at that moment an immersive sound format. Yeah, And that, for more and more, let's say, it seems to be that that generic term is taking over by the industry. And in fact, so immersive sound is related to the addition of height, to the addition of the third dimension. And it is, in fact, not related then to the use of a technology. It is like you can you can even you can do it even without object-based technology. It is not related on uh, on object-based technology. That's one of the visions we have as well. We try first, let's say, to create that uh, immersive sound field, yeah, the vertical spread, with as less as possible channels possible, yeah. And in mm. fact, if you see, um, yeah, because that vertical axis I just told you, that's that's something new, yeah. If we see the way that sound can move in a horizontal axis and how we can a stereo, have a stereo field in a 60-degree axis, yeah, and pan sounds in between, yeah, so you can have phantom sources everywhere. In my first mixes in 2005, I wanted to just to do the same thing in a horizontal axis, so panning sounds horizontally. And what I found out is it didn't work. And I you, thought, you, you mean, I'm sorry, you, you mean panning vertically? Panning vertically. So between two speakers, panning vertically. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. that when I was doing that, it, the sound was jumping from the lower speakers suddenly to the higher speaker. Yeah. So it was not, let's say, smooth going up. There was no, let's say, stable phantom source in between the vertical axis. And I said, that's very weird. Why is that? And I tell you what, when I did that with my head, I was suddenly hearing the sound going up. I said, wow, that's now curious, yeah? So suddenly I realized our our hearing system is horizontally oriented. Yeah, exactly. So what you see, these three colors, these are, in, in fact, let's say what we mean with the layers and at which field is coming what, yeah? Now, the most source sounds in in nature, they're coming from ear level, yeah? So it is very, very important, let's say, to have, let's say, a layer or let's say the reproduction of sound, uh, which is coming close to that level, yeah? Um, yeah. And that's the point, uh, let's say, uh, with the height layer, you see that's, in fact, the, the second layer. In that layer, there are, of course, still a lot of, let's say, source sounds, yeah, but a lot of reflections. And what you have is there is an interchannel, uh, let's say, uh, information that for our brain is very important. With you, when you add the height layer, suddenly there is so much more clarity 
about the position and the spatial information and sound as well from the source sounds in the in the uh, ear level layer. You have probably heard the demo from the Amsterdam city, yeah, where we just show the lower and the height layer, not even let's say with the top layer, yeah, just those mm -hmm. two layers. And suddenly, when you hear the 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 lower layer as a normal surround layer, when you hear then what the information which is in the height layer, just combining by the both, yeah is in fact creating that vertical stereo field all around. And it is that vertical stereo field of 30 degrees all around that creates already the key of an immersive sound.